worship the Lord, and I feel his presence here. The Holy Ghost is here, so we want to let him have his way. I want to turn your attention to John, the 21st chapter, uh, beginning with verse 1, and I'm going to be reading through verse 6. John 21, uh, the King James Version, uh, today at least, and it says this, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on those wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth. And they entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find... They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Can you say amen? amen. Calvary is past. And the resurrection of our Lord has been realized. Only there is skepticism among the disciples if that were really true. It was hard for them to fathom that. It's hard for them to understand But there's one main purpose and desire that our Lord has, and it is this. He wants to manifest himself to to the disciples. He wants to show himself to them. He wants to let them know that he's never left them, nor has he ever forsaken them. Christ, I want you to hear it today. Christ wants to reveal himself to not only his disciples in a real and authentic way, but even today in this service, our Lord's desire, here, right now, this very moment, is to show himself to anyone who here who has a heart to know the Lord. He will manifest himself to you in this service here today. He'll even manifest himself to those doubting Thomases that may be in the congregation or listening today in this world as well. You see, it is this revelation of our Lord to men and women that will change people. You know, organization won't change people. A service even like this won't change people. Um, There are many fine organizations out there and services that you could get that may help you But there's only one thing that can change a life inside and out and make them a new creature. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) Only one thing, it's only a revelation and manifestation of the Lord that will change lives, that will change homes, our nation, and even the world. I want you to consider the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. It is a culmination of all things. It reveals how the old world will end and a new world begin. Don't you look forward to that day? Because the one we're living in now is pretty messed up. And only a new world that Christ sets up will be be great. Amen. So it's not by accident that the last book of the Bible is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a manifestation of of our Lord. In chapter 1, the very first thing that Christ does before he says anything else about the future and the culmination of everything is that he reveals reveals himself to John the Beloved in a way that he has not known before. John had lived with the Messiah for more than three years. He talked with him. He ate with him. He walked with him. He was on the Mount of Transfiguration when Christ 
glory just shone all about him. John was there. And yet with all that history that he had in the past with Jesus Christ, John needed a new revelation of Jesus Christ that he had not had before. And the same is true today. Regardless of what you and I have known about Christ yesterday or in the past. Folks, whatever understanding that we may have had of our Lord up until today, it is God's desire to break in upon our hearts and our lives, even in this service right now, and manifest Himself to us in a more fuller revelation and a more fuller understanding of our Lord that we've never had before, right here today in the house of God. You see, the Gospel of John tells us the story of Simon Peter and six of the other disciples who went fishing on Lake Tiberias, also known as the Sea of Galilee. And they were fishing all night long. They don't know what to believe in their hearts, whether Christ is alive or not. Perhaps in their mind, they believe he's dead and he's not coming back. I do know that Simon Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. Six of the other disciples said, we're going to go with you. So they go back to the only thing that they know how to do, and that is fish. And the Bible tells us that they toiled all night and caught nothing. Now, isn't that a perfect picture scene of every man, woman, teen who endeavors to live their lives without the Savior in their heart? They toil all night and they catch nothing. It's sad but true that a life without Jesus Christ is an empty life, a toiling all night and catching nothing. It's a perfect picture of a life in the darkness of night, on the sea of life, toiling, working hard. But at the end of the night, they look back and they say with tears streaming down their face, I have toiled all night and I have caught nothing. You see, my friends, today you may live in a nice home and you may drive a nice car, You may have a good, decent job with a good retirement plan. You may have some level of financial security. You may have a good name in the community or the neighborhood in which you live. You may have good friends and be well thought of in your workplace. You may even make a name for yourself in this world. But if Jesus Christ is not on board your boat if he is not the captain and master of your soul, if he is not at the helm guiding and directing your life and home, if Christ is not the center of your life, I can tell you now with absolute assurance, you are toiling all night and catching nothing. Your nets are empty. You have nothing of value to show. For all your work and toil, you could have everything this life and this world could offer you, but if you do not have Jesus Christ alive in your heart and soul as Lord and Savior, you have nothing. Jesus himself said, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, you have gained nothing. And at the end of the day, you're going to look back over your life and I'm going to tell you, your job will not save you. The money you have will not save you. Your standing in life will not save you. Your education will not save you. Your friends cannot save you. Your family will not be able to save you. But I can tell tell you what will save you Only a relationship through a new birth in Jesus Christ can save you and me in the end. 
I'm so glad that one day, and I talked a little bit about it today in our discipleship class, I'm so glad that I identified with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that I repented of my sins. I'm so glad that I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ronaldo, where are you? Wave your hand. Where's Ronaldo? Where's Ronaldo? There you are. Going to be baptized today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. I'm so glad that I said yes and I obeyed the word of God by being water baptized in the name, the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that I opened up my heart to receive the precious gift or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God spoke through me and gave that utterance. You see, that experience will save you in the end. So I ask you today, what's keeping you from a total surrender of God to God? What's stopping you? What's keeping you from Christ? What's keeping you from a total surrender to the Lord? You think you have a better plan? You think you have a better way? than the one God has laid out in his word? You think you're smart enough to do it yourself rather than listen to the Holy Scriptures that are life? You see, you believe if you fish on the left side, you're going to catch something. But the truth of the matter is, you're going to fish all night and catch nothing. Amen. Amen. Jesus still calls out and says to the disciples, he says, do you have any meat? Have you caught any fish? Do you have anything? Is there anything of substance in your nets? Is there anything that you can, that can, you can, you can use that can sustain your life? Is there anything in your net? You've been fishing on the left side all night long. And there's nothing there. The answer for you and me is still true today. Jesus told the disciples, cast your nets on the right side. And you will find what you are looking for. Oh, we think we know better, don't we? Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, we think that we know better, but Jesus makes it clear. There is a wrong side of life and there is a right side of life. And he says to you and me today, cast your nets on the right side. And when they obeyed the Lord, they caught more fish than they could ever dream of catching in a single time. Hear me today. God always gives you more than you can ever imagine when you and I step out on faith and obey his word. The disciples caught so much fish in their nets that their nets began to break and they called to the other disciples in their boats to come help them to receive what God has provided. Can I tell you now that that's how God works? When it comes to giving, or the paying of your tithes and offerings to God, I can tell you now that when you and I obey God's word and we bring it into the storehouse of God, the eternal word of God says to you and me, don't you know that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing in so much as that there is no room to receive it. That's the word of God. When you and I turn our life over to, let me tell you young people today, as you start your journey, or if you're working, tithe. Hear me. Give 10% to God, and then give love offerings above that. And I can assure you, God will meet every single need in your life, and he'll bless you in ways that are far beyond dollars and cents. Can I get a witness here today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I've had people tell me over the years, I can't afford to tithe. I said, you can't afford not to. If you want to be blessed, here's the promise. God says, you fish your way, you fish on the left side, at the end of the day, you're going to look back and you're going to realize you have caught nothing. If you spend all your money on yourself, at the end of the day, it'll be like gravel in your mouth. But if you'll give God what belongs to Him and fish on the right side of things, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be more fish in your boat than you can handle because that's the way God works and that is His Word. He wants to bless us so abundantly. You know, the disciples' catch that day was unimaginable. They counted it. It was 153 great fish. Something that they could not ever even dream of in their life. And oh, my friends, today, when you and I obey God's word and we cast our nets on the right side of life, I can assure you God's bountiful supply is more than we could ever imagine. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have one more thing to share, and perhaps today you or someone in, who is watching on live stream today knew the Lord before, but you have wandered away from Him. Perhaps you are not living the surrendered life. You know, when Christ first called Simon Peter, where was he? He was on the lake fishing all night and catching nothing. But at the word of Christ... He let down his nets again, and he had a good catch. And then Jesus spoke these words to him, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And Simon did that. Now fast forward. Christ has been beat up. He has been tortured. Simon Peter is warming himself at the enemy's fire. And they accuse him of being a disciple, and he denies it. Somebody else says, I, I think you were with him. And Simon Peter, to prove that he wasn't one of the disciples, started cussing. Somebody else said it again. And he got more vehement and started using more language. He wanted to prove he wasn't one of them. So he goes out fishing again. Not fully convinced that Christ is alive. He's out on the lake this night. And once again, before he gave, gave his life to the Lord, he fished all night and caught nothing. And then when he wandered away from the Lord, we find him here fishing all night and catching nothing. Nothing. Maybe that describes you today. You once knew the Lord, but today you are away from Him. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is still calling you today back to Him. He is calling you back home. And He still says to you and me, if you've wandered away from the Lord, cast your net on the right side and your life will be blessed. Come on back to the word of the Lord and let him bless your life and you will be filled with good things. Can I get a witness here today in this auditorium? So he still says to you and me, return unto me and you'll be blessed. Let me close with three lessons learned here. Three principles in this story that we need to capture today. Number one, what are you really looking, what you're really looking for may be closer than you think. Number two, that you should not be afraid of changing directions. And number three, Jesus Christ knows more about your affairs than you can ever imagine. Number one, Christ is nearer than you think. You see, the real answer was not an ocean away or even on the other side of the lake. It was just on the right side all along. Now, you know, these men were professional fishermen of many generations. 
they knew the lake backwards and forwards. And they had, they had fished in these waters all of their life. Their parents had, their grandparents and great-grandparents. And yet these professional fishermen were fishing all night and catching nothing. But when they obeyed Jesus, the fish were nearer to them than they thought. They were on the left side. The Lord said, cast it on the right. And the answer to your life today is nearer than you can ever imagine. I can tell you it's on the right side. And when you draw near to God, the scripture says, he will draw near to you. Do you remember when Simon Peter was asked to get out of the boat and walk toward Jesus on the water? You remember that? He walked on the water. As he watched the Lord, he started walking on the water. But then he took his eyes off the Lord and started looking at the waves and the wind. And the Bible says he began to sink. Now, I don't know how far Jesus was away originally, but he had to walk to get to him. But the Bible says when he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And the scripture says immediately. Jesus took him by the hand. He was closer to Christ than he thought. He was nearer to the answer than he thought. He was so near to Simon when he began to sink. I'm here to tell you today, Christ is near you right now. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. He's not a far, God afar off. He's right here and he is close, as close as the mention of his name. He's on the right side. Number two, don't be afraid to change directions. Jesus told them to do something that was totally different than they were used to doing it. You know, in the, in the, in the past generations, they've always done it. They've always fished on the left side. That's the way it's always done. But Jesus says, do it my way. Obey me. I think the real question today is the question Jesus asked the disciples as they had toiled all night in their fishing. He says, do you have any meat? Is there anything in your net? Hello? You know, we can discuss various ways of doing things, but the real issue is this. Do you have anything of substance in your net? Is there any meat? Are you satisfied with your catch? When you lay down at night, do you have peace that passes all understanding? When you lay down at night, is the presence of God on your life? You know, I have watched over the years that sometimes religious traditions and even family traditions can get in the way of receiving the blessing that Christ has for their lives. Sometimes in our past ways, the changing the directions and following Christ is sometimes foreign to them. And well, you know, we get into a, a mindset that we think we know better. We think we have the answer. It was a fateful day in 1969 at Past Christian, Mississippi. A group of people were there preparing to have a hurricane party in the face of a storm named Camille. They were not ignorant of the dangers, but they were overconfident. They let their egos and their pride influence their decisions. What else they thought or felt, we'll never know. But what we do know is that the wind was howling outside the posh Richelieu apartments when police chief Jerry Peralta pulled up sometime after dark, facing the beach that was less than 250 feet from the surf, the apartments were directly in line of the danger. A man with a drink in his hand came out on the second floor balcony and waved. Peralta yelled up, you all need to clear out of here as quickly as you can. The storm's getting worse. But as others joined the man on the balcony, they all just laughed at Peralta's orders to leave. This is my land, one of them yelled back. If you want me off, you'll have to arrest me. 
Peralto didn't arrest anyone, but he wasn't able to persuade them to leave either. He wrote down the names of the next of kin of the 20 or so people who gathered there to party through the storm. They laughed as he took their names. They had been warned, but they had no intention of leaving. They thought they knew better. It was 10, 15 p.m. when the front wall of the storm came ashore. Scientists clocked Camille's wind speed at more than 205 miles per hour, the strongest on record. Raindrops hit with the force of bullets and waves off the Gulf Coast crested between 22 and 28 feet, almost three stories high. News reports later showed that the worst damage came at that little apartment settlement in the motels and go-go bars and gambling houses known as Past Christian Mississippi, where some 20 people were killed at a hurricane party in the Richelieu Apartments. Nothing was left of the three-story structure but the foundation and the swimming pool. And the only survivor was a five-year-old boy clinging to a mattress the following day. Oh, we think we know better than the Lord. We believe we can fish on the left side and everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be cool. You can have your belief and I'll have mine. And we'll all make it. Folks, I'm here to tell you this morning there is a left side And there is a right side to things. Finally, Jesus knows what is best for you more than you do. The issue is who you're going to trust. Who will be the Lord and the master of your life? Do you want to take the reins? Do you want to be the master? See, that was the deception to Eve. Satan said, you can be as gods. You can decide for yourself what is right and wrong for you. You're going to be just like God. And that line he used to Eve in that Garden of Eden is the same line he uses in 2022 to people. You can be your own God. You can decide for yourself what is right and wrong for you. But I'm here to tell you Jesus knows more about you than you know about yourself. And Jesus knows what's best for your life and for my life. You see, these were professional fishermen for generations. What does Jesus know? He's 33 years old and he's just a carpenter. What does he know about fishing? What does he know about this or me? Well, the truth is Christ knows all about you. He knows the path that you should walk. He knows the job that you should have. He knows the college you should attend or even not. He knows the person you should marry. He knows what is best for your life and for mine. There's an old song that is so simple and yet so profound. It goes like this. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust and obey. There is no other way. Will you open up your heart and receive the Holy Spirit today? Will you reach out to Him and be filled with the overflowing power of God? Will you cast your net on the right side of your boat and receive the blessing? Will you cast your net on the right side? The scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, 
acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Would you stand today? Hallelujah.